Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Jay here with another video for you. Uh, this one here, I was planning on doing last night, but um, I kind of was tired and didn't really feel like doing it, so I decided to save it for the day. Now, uh, the movie that I'm going to talk about here, first of all, I uh, received in the mail, and just to show you before I show the movie, I got it in the mail. And I already opened it and everything because I just couldn't wait to open it and see. Well, I knew exactly what was going to be inside, but at the same time, I just couldn't wait to get it open because I was surprised at the fact that even though I've seen this movie countless, countless times, I had never owned it in my collection. Never, I never owned the movie. I guess because I've seen it so many times that I didn't. I guess I didn't feel that I needed it in the collection at all. But at the same time, now because I have gotten so in rap and you know in rap or whatever into uh, the horror movies and everything like this I just had to go ahead and buy it and without me just going on and on I know you guys don't want to hear all that let's just get straight to it and that is the movie that I picked up well that I bought in the mail is considered a classic and also kind of kicked off the what they call it, the horror uh, influx of the late 70s into the you know the golden age which is considered from the late 70s on to the uh heyday in the night in the 80s and everything like that and this guy i'm a big fan of his movies that he direct and like i say without me rambling on and on let's just get right to it it is the 1978 version of halloween the best version in my opinion rob zombie's version is the first one is pretty good but it doesn't hold up to this version. John Carpenter's, the original Night Halloween. <clears throat> and I got it in Blu-ray, as you guys can see, which stars uh, Donald Pleasance as Dr. Sam Loomis, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Nick Castle as The Shape. To me, uh, Nick Castle gives the best performance of anyone who's uh, put on the Michael Myers mask and, you know, just his performance alone. I mean, because I think he's the only guy that played Michael Myers who was actually like an actor or whatever. All the other guys that played him were stuntmen, so they played him more like a drone-like. But with Nick Castle, just like the little subtle uh, moves that he would do, and you know, like when he, um, I'm like I said, I'm sure everybody's seen the movie by now, so I'm not really spoiling anything. If you haven't seen the movie, shame on you if you call yourself a horror fan. But anyway, the little subtle, um, you know, head nod that he do after he kills uh, Bob in the kitchen, after he stabs him in the kitchen, and he just does a little innocent head nod to him. It, you know, things like that, that walk that he has, and just a little subtle movement that Nick Castle brought to the castle. Now, I know he's, uh, I think Nick Castle, he went on to uh, direct a few movies and uh, produce also, I mean, because him and John Carpenter are such good friends, um, in uh, The Fog, he was uh, the character that Tom Atkin played was named after Nick Castle, by the way, also. So, like I said, I just wanted to share that with you guys here, and um, uh, that's pretty much what I want to say about that. If you guys have any comments or anything that you want to ask or even say about the movie that you like about Halloween, but... Before I even go, um, just do want to open it up and you know show the inside. And there it is, uh, Halloween. Uh, take out this little um, case here. Um, as here, I actually own four of the five on here now, which is uh, Dawn of the Dead, the original Day of the Dead, the original Halloween, which I have here. Evil Dead Two, but of course I'll own um, those on a regular DVD. Don't think I'll be adding those to the Blu-ray um, collection that I'm trying to start up now. But, like I said, I already own all three of those anyway. And the other one was, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, excuse me. It's uh, Beowulf versus uh, Beowulf and Grendel. If you can, right yep. If you can see that, Beowulf and Grendel. Uh, I've never seen it. If anybody's ever seen it, you know, let me know how it is or whatever. I um, do want to show off this here, the Michael Myers case right there coming to get you going to get you but anyway so yeah that's all i want to do i just want to show it off and i'm kind of in the process of watching it with the commentary on i actually like commentary tracks 
I think all of the uh, John Carpenter movies that I own that um, have com well, all of them do have commentary tracks, and I've listened to all of those movies because I like to actually listen to what John Carpenter had to say about movies. He actually gives good uh, detail about his movies and like how they did things because to me, all of his movies from the late seventies on to the mid eighties were he he just had a way about him. Him, I think. The team of him, of John Carpenter, and Dean Cundey, who was his director of photography on a few of his movies, the two of them together had some great way of shooting scenes and everything like that. So I really like to listen to John Carpenter when he talks about um, filmmaking and everything because he doesn't make it boring or dull like some uh, producers and directors do. But when you listen to John Carpenter, especially if you listen to any commentary with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, both those commentaries that I've heard on uh, The Thing and um, Big Trouble in Little China, those two commentaries are really fun to listen to. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China, not so much because they kind of don't even talk about the movie. It's just the two of them talking about a whole bunch of other stuff. I think I learned a lot about those guys' lives just by listening to the commentary of uh, Big Trouble in Little China. But, like I said, if you have any, so make sure you uh, rate, comment, you know, subscribe, continue to subscribe, and um, everything like that. And if you want to talk about this little movie here that was made on a shoestring budget but spawned a franchise and countless millions of dollars, I don't, know, I don't think it's at the billion dollar mark yet. i probably have to check that out. But if you want to just talk about it, just comment down below and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching as always peace and i'll see you later